yes, we're headed back in time today to the 1940s, my favorite decade, if you couldn't guess. <laughs> and we are going back to my Eating for Victory cookbook, which I absolutely love. And today we're going to be learning about green vegetables. So if you are like me, green vegetable means maybe a lettuce, maybe cucumber, maybe green pepper. You know, you don't stray too far from those common everyday green vegetables. I want to experiment with things like kale and Brussels sprouts, but I don't really have any recipes in order to make them. Now, my husband did pick up this cauliflower. Um, I do once a month grocery shopping haul for our whole family, and then he goes once a week and he does a few fresh pickups, you know, um, bananas, oranges, any vegetable that we need, that sort of thing. So these were on sale and so we picked it up and I thought, you know what, I wonder if there is a recipe in my book and lo and behold, there's an entire section on green vegetables. So I'll quickly list here all the different types of green vegetables that they have listed in the book. Um, there is so many different ones and each one, it comes with a recipe, which is pretty interesting. Of course, we have the cauliflower. So we are going to be looking at a cauliflower or broccoli in hollandaise sauce recipe. And here's our recipe here. Um, so we need one large or two small broccoli or cauliflowers, two tablespoons of flour, a half a pint of milk or stock or vegetable water, four peppercorns in a muslin bag. I'm not sure I have a muslin bag. I'll, I'll figure something out. Two, uh, I'm going to use real eggs instead of dried eggs because I'm not rationed. Uh, and then we have three tablespoons of vinegar, pepper, and salt. So I'm going to get started by cutting up my cauliflower. So the instructions were given for a head of cauliflower is that one head would equal four portions um, and that you should um, cut it into small brigs and then wash well and then cooked and also when you buy it, ask for the leaves to be remained. Nowadays we go to the grocery store, the leaves are on or they're not, <laughs> but you want to look for one with leaves because the leaves actually make a dish all by themselves. You can cook them just like cabbage and that is also in the book as well. So I will set these aside and we'll see if we can make a dish with the leaves. I have never done that before. I actually didn't know you could eat cauliflower leaves. It says also the stem can be saved and that can be cooked as well. So we are going to be saving everything just like they did in the 1940s. So since we have only one pound of vegetable, I'll need half of a oh, dessert spoon. That's not a dessert spoon. All right, that's better. So I need half of a dessert spoon of salt and I need a quarter. So a quarter of a pint of water was about 142 milliliters. So I have to half that. So that would be 75 milliliters. Wow, one eighth of a pint. That's all I'm gonna cook in? Okay, that's how much we're gonna add. We'll see how this turns out. All right, we've got our vegetables on, and what I love about this is it actually says to keep the vegetable water. So once this is cooked, we keep our vegetable water, and that will help, help count towards the water that we need for our recipe, which is half a pint of milk, stock, or vegetable water. That's the vegetable water. I love that. Sounds like the hollandaise sauce takes less than 10 minutes to pull together. So I'll let the vegetables rest and I'll pull that together. In the meantime, I can get started on my stems and leaves. So the recipe I have for the stems or the leaves is to boil in a little bit of salted water, drain, then roll in brown breadcrumbs and fry in a very little fat or brown in the oven. So as you know, everything was saved back in the 1940s. So the breadcrumbs would just be a little bit of stale bread, some leftover bread. Um, so we're gonna use a little bit of lard and get that started. to chop, but I thought it would just be, 
I don't know, they'd be softer and more tasty if they were chopped up. I thought I'd give that a try. And after everything, this is how much waste I have from my whole cauliflower. This is all I am throwing into our compost. So I've just been checking on my vegetables and just to make sure they're not burning on the bottom, I can still see there's quite a bit of liquid in there. I've just been shaking them around to try and stir them, but not taking the lid off because I don't want to disrupt the steam. I want it to all stay trapped in there. <laughs> hollandaise sauce so I've got my milk here this is only uh, a quarter of a pint and so I still will need more which I'll use from that vegetable water and now I'm going to add my flour <laughs> smooth paste you can see it's nice and smooth with my flour and this is all that's available for my vegetable water most of it has steamed off so I am going to need to add a lot more milk I'll use about 250 milliliters of combined um, milk and vegetable water and then because I have a little bit in there and now I will boil this so I have my peppercorns and I have this a little bag and this is what I actually used when I tried to use soap nuts in the laundry. You would put your soap nuts in here and they would soap up in your laundry and it didn't work very well in our laundry. I think it's because we have very hard water. Um, but anyway, so I still have this little baggie and it doesn't smell like laundry, it doesn't smell like anything. So I think we're safe to put in some peppercorns. And so I'm gonna use this instead of muslin and I don't know that the peppercorns will actually get through this fabric, I'm not sure, but this is all I have. So this is what I'm going to use. And it's said to use four peppercorns, it's not very many. Anyway, let's put it in. I've now reached a boil with my milk and vegetable water. So I'm going to be adding my flour. and also my a little peppercorn sachet. <laughs> All right, and now this will boil for five minutes. two to three minutes. Well, I've never made hollandaise sauce, but it looks like the hollandaise sauce. It's very odd having this bag with the peppercorns in the middle of it. A peppercorn got loose. I guess I'll just take that one out. All right, I'm going to remove this now from my hollandaise sauce. It's done cooking. And now I'll add three tablespoons of vinegar. My hollandaise sauce is looking a little bit like scrambled eggs, so I think I may have cooked it a bit too long. One, two, three. And season with salt and pepper. What do you think? That look okay? <laughs> now I'm going to plate some and try it. So this Cauliflower has just been sitting here waiting patiently for the hollandaise sauce, which didn't take too long. Definitely was a very quick sauce to make. There we go. Not very colorful, but <laughs> we'll give it a try. than I thought it would be and we use rice milk because we can't have cow's milk so with cow's milk this would be so creamy and so delicious wow I'm really surprised that that turned out I really thought I was messing things up that's pretty good I don't know that I'd make it again as the sauce was pretty labor-intensive I had to stir it the whole time because I was afraid it would burn I'm gonna have my husband come and try this out. What do you think? Mm. 
kids eating your tikka. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. It's like a, like a cheesy sauce. I like that. There's no cheese. Different. Really? No, it's, I like it's that. hollandaise. Hmm. So it's eggs and milk and salt and pepper. That's pretty much it. It's very good. You like it? Would it's you... good. Do you want to finish it? I, I made a lot. <laughs> very very toasted like toasted bread so I'm going to take this off and give it a try now using up all the leaves the stem hmm that's really good it certainly tastes like cauliflower it has a wonderful texture because you've got the crunchy of the, the bread and the softness of the cauliflower um, I would add a little bit of ketchup to it but honestly it is a lot like perhaps hash browns that you would make in the morning it totally reminds me of hash browns. Yeah, <laughs> with a little bit of a cauliflower taste. So Jackson, that's something that mommy made. It's from an old 1940s recipe. This looks cool. Does it have any potatoes? Nope, no potato in it. Okay, I'll try it. Mm, this is good. So, so you like that too, Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just cauliflower and breadcrumbs. Good, huh? A little mushy around the ends, but I, other than that, I like it. Toast, I had a Alright Brooklyn, what do you think? <laughs> not a fan? Not a fan of the hollandaise sauce? Brooklyn's <laughs> Sorry, what did you think it tasted like? Oh, thanks. So that was cauliflower in hollandaise sauce. What did you think? Would you make that recipe at home? You know, some of the kids like it, some of the kids don't. I do have picky kids. <laughs> I'm sure many of you out there can relate. Um, this is something that I think my husband will make again, but as for myself, I think this was a one-time fun experiment, um, but I was really excited by the leaves. Were you excited by how they turned out? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all these lovely mavens who commented on my last video. Thank you so much. I love when you leave me a comment. I love chatting with you down in the comments below. I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!